This video describes the upgrade to the cooling system of my Daimler 66 V12. It was not coping with anything other than temperate weather. All the parts of the cooling system were upgraded and I'll tell you in this video how I did that and how I converted to twin electric fans using some of the existing wiring and a new cooling system controller and how I tried and failed to install a new aluminium radiator. The current setup is the electric fan down there it will come on if the air conditioning is switched on or if the temperature of the coolant in the water pump activated by a switch in the water pump which I'll show you later if that temperature reaches a set point which is at about 90 degrees Celsius um, whatever that is in American the fan will kick in regardless of whether the ignition is on or off of course we have the mechanical fan as well which is the primary fan which disengages when the engine increases above 1800 rpm so it's good for slow moving traffic and that sort of thing i'm going to use the logic of the auxiliary fan the electric fan down there to feed a signal to the new control system which i'll show you in a moment the existing system uses two relays there's this one which takes an input from the compressor when the compressor switched on it sends a signal 12 volts to this relay here similarly if the temperature switch in the water pump activates uh, because of the temperature of the water it also sends 12 volts to this but that's not the end of it then that relay over there sends a signal to this relay here which is the power relay it's got the heavy duty if you can see down there these are the that's the 12 volt supply, heavy cables for supplying the current to the fan. This one gets activated uh, through terminal 86. So I'm gonna make use of these two green wires here. They will, they're now together, they will feed into what I'm about to show you. This is the smart controller for these fans. And what it does is when it's activated, it gets a 12 volt feed to power the actual microelectronics that will give a display when it's all installed and powered up. And it has a, one of these wires, there it is, this one here, this green one, it's marked air conditioning. So this one, uh, I will connect to those two green wires on that power relay for the existing auxiliary fan. That will give me the logic of air conditioning on and or the temperature switch in the water pump that will then turn on one of the fans when another temperature sensor which is connected will be connected to this when that reaches a certain set point which i can adjust there the second fan will come on now the way to achieve that is in the top hose on the left hand side of the cooling system top hose which will be going to here this radiator that's the top along there the left hand side this will be in line in that hose this here this one that is a connector there this is a temperature sensor it's not a switch it's not binary on or off it's a sensor and it sends different values to this controller when the temperature of the coolant changes and so that's how you can adjust the set point so at a certain point you go I wanted to come on now you adjust this to turn that second fan on at that temperature but where there was the existing temperature switch in the water pump of the Jag Daimler that was set to come on at about 90 degrees I want it to come on lower than that so I bought separately this switch which I will use the wiring from the two spade connectors which are in the car at the moment down there there are two wires just where i'm pointing to that's the water pump there that's the temperature switch that i'm pointing to down to the halfway down and the two wires coming off it i will then just simply put them on there and it will work the same as that one in the car 
but the switch will activate at a lower temperature. So this is the one that sets the one fan coming on at a lower temperature before the engine's too hot. And this one will be set to come on at the higher temperature, which brings on the second fan. So it's making use of what's already in the car, the logic that has been working for however many, 40 years, um, but just improving upon it by having a, a second fan. With the radiator out, I can see there's lots of grime and dirt, so the whole front of the engine needs to be cleaned. I was able to get to this component, which is a plug for the cam tensioner. That's the adjustment goes through there. Those are a nightmare to replace. Uh, they go, this is the old one, they get old and sort of hard and they, they crack and break. Now I've drilled, because I had access to get a drill into this with the radiator removed, all this extra space allowed me to do that. I used successively larger drill bits and worked up to about a, an eight mil drill bit. The bits of plastic that the swarf, if you like, were pulled back by the drill bit as I drilled in. I was very careful and slow to do it. Uh, and having the hole through the middle, it just gave me, me a bit more ability to deform it and prise the old one out with uh, flathead screwdrivers. Not a very elegant solution, but it worked. And I'm really glad to get this new um, replacement in because I think there's lots of oil been dripping down the engine. I don't know if you can see it shining down there. I had presumed it was from behind here, but this is water pump. So, although the sealer here that's old and cracked, I think probably the oil leak that had been plaguing this car was from that plug, which is great. Now, another problem I have is this, and there's another one down lower. These are pipes from the transmission. They go into the radiator. There's a, a section in the radiator, which I'll show you in a minute, that um, has automatic transmission fluid and it cools that. We have a mismatch with the new radiator and the uh, connectors there. So these screw on, cover them up to protect them because they are looking, they look quite delicate. So I'll show you what I mean. This section of the radiator is the automatic transmission fluid cooling section. It is just this part, this end, where transmission fluid goes in. I'm not sure which is the inlet, which is the outlet, but anyway, one of each. And um, you can see there's, it's about, what is that? Only five centimeters tall, and it's got this thread on it and a special type of connector with an O-ring in it to seal it. These are brazed or welded into the radiator. So I need to replicate this because the, uh, this is the new radiator. It has these um, male connections on it, onto which go these female connectors, but it's just push fit and I guess a clamp for a hose with no connector on the end of it already. Just a hose goes on there, which is not what we have on the car at the moment. So this is my biggest problem at the moment is, is that. Actually, I've got another bigger problem I'll tell you about in a second. But uh, yeah, so these, um, if I could have these somehow brazed on to the new radiator, that'd be good or equivalents made up, that would be great. But um, that's yet to be resolved. Now, the other problem I was gonna tell you about is at the top of, this is the top of the radiator, so we're upside down. Let's go around this way. This is where the, what's called the banjo bolt fits. And there are copper washers as well. And that's the top of the radiator. And this aluminium equivalent, if there were to be one of those, it would be here somewhere, out there. And there isn't one, there isn't a hole. So I've got to try and engineer something to replicate the one in the original. This silver pipe, you can see here, I've painted it. It's just drying at the moment. This part of it here, this is the banjo bolt, as named. And it's got a groove on the inside and those holes I showed you and the hollow bolt on the top of the old radiator, that bolt goes through here. So we would be looking at the top of the radiator here. And it allows water to pass through and around and it does its clever Venturi business 
to uh, empty any air out of the top of the radiator because there isn't a cap at the top of the radiator but there isn't a connector for this at the top of the new radiator. This is the old radiator as you can see at the bottom there completely gummed up it's oil and dirt very fine pollen I guess and looks like animal fur as well it's uh, Probably 25% was completely gummed up, so the radiator had to come out to be cleaned anyway, but because it's so rusty inside and out, uh, I've replaced it with the aluminium one I showed you.